Uh, my name is Antonis Antonio, and I'm professor of cancer risk prediction at the University of uh, Cambridge. In this introductory presentation, I will provide a brief overview of multifactorial cancer risk prediction. I will explain what it is, how we do it, and why it is important. So cancer risk and the underlying Bodicea model can be used to predict the risks of both breast and ovarian cancer, but here I'm focusing mainly on the breast cancer uh, component. So we now know from uh, genetic and epidemiological studies that several um, factors are associated with the risk of developing breast cancer. So these include reproductive, menstrual, hormonal, lifestyle, physiological factors, but also there is mammographic density and family history in close relatives. That's family history of cancer. And there have been several breast cancer genetic susceptibility variants identified uh, as well. So these are summarized in this graph here. The x-axis shows the frequency with which these genetic variants occur in the population. And the y-axis shows the relative risk of uh, breast cancer. So we have rare genetic variants that are associated with moderate or high risks of developing breast cancer and then multiple common genetic variants that individually are associated with low risks of developing uh, the disease. And all these genetic variants have been estimated to uh, account for around 45% of the familial aggregation of uh, breast cancer. So taking, taking all these uh, epidemiological factors uh, uh, and genetic factors uh, together, it means that much more reliable and powerful breast cancer risk prediction can be achieved when we consider uh, the joint effects of these risk factors together in multifactorial risk prediction, as opposed to considering the risk factors uh, individually. So the CAN risk tool, which uses the multifactorial Bodicea model, now considers the joint effects of all these factors uh, uh, together. So looking at each of these components in more detail and first, at the moderate and high risk genes that are included in the model. So uh, the, the model includes the effects of mutations in genes such as BRC1, BRCA2, and PALB2, which are associated with high risks of developing breast cancer. So this graph shows the risks of developing breast cancer by age. So these genes are associated with risks of uh, more than 50% by age 80. And then we have the effects of mutations in five other genes, which uh, are associated with very similar risks. The risks vary between uh, age, between 21 to 24% by age uh, 80. The model also includes the combined effects of common uh, genetic variants, which are summarized in terms of uh, polygenic uh, risk scores. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, each of these common genetic variants have small effect uh, on risk. So uh, the polygenic uh, risk score is just a summation of these small effects or the summation of those uh, genetic alteration, common genetic alterations uh, together. And it has been demonstrated in the population that women who have, um, uh, who have been diagnosed with breast cancer tend to have higher polygenic uh, scores compared to unaffected uh, women. And in turn, those who have high polygenic scores or those who have multiple of those genetic uh, alterations tend to have higher risks of developing breast cancer compared to those who have low polygenic scores. So those with few of these alterations will have lower risk of developing breast cancer. And finally, the model also includes several of the epidemiological uh, risk factors. So in particular, uh, the model includes the effects of age at menarche, age at menopause, parity, age at first live birth, the use of oral contraceptives, use of menopausal hormone therapy, body mass index, height, and alcohol use. And it includes also the associations between mammographic density and breast cancer uh, risk. The model also includes the information on uh, cancer in close uh, uh, relatives. So all these uh, factors together are, are combined in the Bodicea mathematical uh, model and to uh, make that more easily um, accessible to healthcare professionals for use in clinical practice. So the CAN risk tool was developed, which enables healthcare professionals to obtain these cancer risks uh, easily. 
So can risk can be accessed through this web address here at canrisk.org. So as you can see, can the, the tool is organized in, in, in this accordion style uh, format where the different factors are grouped uh, together. Uh, so the user can click on each of these um, um, kind of headings uh, in the expand and kind of they can enter information on the different risk factors such as height here and BMI. And then once all the risk factors are provided, the calculations uh, can be done. It has been demonstrated in several studies that uh, can risk provides valid risks even when certain types of data are, are missing. But of course, uh, the more data one provides, the more personalized the cancer risk uh, will be. However, it is important to keep in mind that um, so, um, some of the uh, some other risk factors which may have been reported in the epidemiological uh, literature uh, that are associated with breast cancer risk may not be necessarily included in the model. For example, the history of benign disease. So these need to be taken into account when interpreting the cancer risks uh, as well. So why do we do it? Of course, the multifactorial risk prediction now enables us to provide more personalized cancer risks and therefore uh, kind of facilitates cancer risk uh, stratification. And by that, I mean, it enables us to identify women who have sufficiently different risks of developing breast cancer and, uh, and for whom kind of their clinical management options may be different. Of course, the ultimate here aim here is to um, uh, enable us to identify those who will benefit the most from the available prevention and early detection uh, approaches. For example, identifying um, those who will benefit from screening, deciding when to offer, how often to offer the screening for cancer, when it comes to risk reducing medication or surgery, deciding who will benefit most from those interventions and when to offer it, but also identifying those who will benefit most from lifestyle or behavioral changes for reducing their future risk of developing uh, breast cancer. So the aim here ultimately is of course to empower the routine use of multifactorial breast cancer risk prediction at all levels of uh, clinical care. So from primary care to oncology, the clinical uh, genetics, which ultimately will enable the referral of uh, at-risk women to the most appropriate healthcare level for their clinical uh, management. So, thank you.